Well, I'm Cartagena. Welcome. And, um, you know, I have to start off this interview just by saying how excited we are to uh, work with you and Nanette Hernandez from uh, Segunda Kimbamba on the Musica y Ritmos uh, Latin American Dance Series. Um, we have a moment to talk with, um, with Juan uh, about this series, about Latin American music in Jersey City and Hudson County, um, and how that relates to um, the, the, med, the, the, the long history of uh, Latin American presence in the region. Um, and I was wondering, uh, Juan, if you could just give us kind of back up and just give us a little background. You know, um, Jersey City is kind of known as a, a, a place that immigrants from all over the world have come to, and particularly from Latin America. Could you give us a little just background kind of you know, over the last uh, 100 years or so, what, have, what has been the history of immigration from Latin America to this region? Sure. Um, well, Sam, you said it correctly just now, right? This is a, this is a mecca for working class folk. The, this Hudson County, uh, basically the backyard of New York City, is where the train lines uh, coming from the south, coming from the west, uh, all converged and the terminals of uh, at Liberty Park, right? Liberty State Park terminal, the train terminal mm -hmm. is all is all significant in our history as a working class town. There's a grittiness to Jersey City that really hasn't really escaped, right? No matter how the different uh, current migration patterns are. Uh, and that grittiness is exhib exhibited by working class folk. And as a result, you know, we shouldn't be surprising that folks from the Caribbean and Central America and Latin America would also gravitate here for, for a foothold in the American dream, and that is to get a job. And as a result of that migration uh, and that pull factor to this area of the country, what we've seen is migrations that have been typically uh, patterned, patterned after similar migrations into New York City. So from a Latin American context, if you go back into the early parts of the, of the 19th, uh, late parts of the 19th century, early parts of the 20th century, that migration is mostly out of the Caribbean. Uh, Mexico is dominates and Mexicans dominate, of course, the Southwest and the West. But up here, the Caribbean migration was probably the first ones. And those came primarily from Cuba and also Puerto Rico, even as early as the late 1900s, early uh, 20th century. So. You look at those two islands first, and then over time, very, very rapidly, in only about 50, 60 years, we've seen migration patterns, you know, now exhibiting the entire incredible tapestry of Central American and Latin American countries, right? So we see migrations into the county, of uh, people from the Dominican Republic, but also from Bolivia, also from Peru, also, of course, from Mexico, uh, Central America, Salvadoreños, wow. Centro Americanos. You know, when you look at the vibrancy of places like Bergen Line Avenue in Union City, where you can get food from every Central American, Caribbean, and Latin American country, that's what we're talking about. That's the diversity of Hudson County and the diversity of Jersey City. You you grew up um, in Jersey City, uh, surrounded by um, this environment of the diversity um, and you know, a big part of how that gets reflected, you start talking a bit about the food, the cuisine, um, but of course, we're also here to talk about music. So sure. um, can you talk a little bit about the, the way that music um, reflects, the, the musical presence here in Jersey City, Hudson County, how that reflects the, the different ways of, waves of immigration that have happened? What type, what styles of sure. music were brought? Where was their cross-pollination? Mm -hmm. No, no question that music, you know, food, culture, um, uh, religious practices, all, you all put into a blender. And that's that creates the diversity that we have in the city of Jersey City and, and Hudson County as well. Um, so it's actually two, two, in two different aspects. One is there's music that brings you back to your homeland, right? The one that you put on because you miss your homeland. The one that you know you haven't been able to see your mother in, in 10 years because you can't afford to fly back and you can't afford to bring her. Um, the music that reminds you of the hills, the mountains, the rivers, the uh, beaches. Um, like that classic song out of Puerto Rico called El Mi Viejo San Juan, in my old San Juan, which is popular throughout Central America and Latin America because almost every country, Sam, has a San Juan mm -hmm. as a city, right? So everybody was playing it. So there's that element of music that 
you know, characterizes the music scene in Jersey City and Hunter County. The other is that cross-pollination. I mean, there is nothing new about the fact that music as practiced by Latin American migrants is gonna be affected by the music we were hearing in the streets of Jersey City. And that includes the incredible uh, uh, legacy of music in the African-American diaspora and how that reflects in those elements. So that, that by the time I grew up, when I was listening to what was called soul music, when I was listening to rhythm and blues, when I was listening to funk, that all affected music that I knew. We called it salsa perhaps, but it was also preceded by Boogaloo. And Boogaloo is an amalgamation of African-American musical influences along with um, Caribbean influences. So the music became that. And, that's, and this is where I get to the next point that I want to raise with you, Sam, and that is, our music in Jersey City and Hudson County not only reflects our home countries, but it was where it was practiced and where it was manifested, right? So you see like social clubs, like local small social clubs of Puerto Ricans or Dominicans of other Latin American countries. You the Cuban population into Northern Hudson County, into West New York, Gothenburg, Union City, of course. You see social clubs first and then you see um, basement, uh, church basement halls, right? Because the Catholic Church had a big influence throughout Central America, the Caribbean, South America. And you see the music is being played there. It's played like a Christmas time concert. So it's played for Mother's Day or for Father's Day. And the, the combination of small, small venue space where people just gather and, you know, to, to share is, is a hotbed of the music scene. And then, then we started, per, you know, getting seeing the music in commercial spaces like small nightclubs, small restaurants, and that all percolated. When New York City was at the height of the salsa craze with the Fania uh, record label, there were multiple groups and clubs right here in Jersey City, Hudson County, that people just gravitated to just to dance. And when the Cuban influence of Hudson County was also being seen in rumba, you know the the incredible richness of Afro-Cuban drumming. You could see that and hear that throughout the streets of Northern Hudson County. And you then, you fast forward to what happened on the river. Well, remember, we call this the river. Uh, and if you grew up in Jersey City, you don't call it the waterfront. It's the river. And when we were young, we would all go to the river to hang out. And what did you hear when you were in the river? You would hear guaguanco, you would hear, you would hear guaracha, you would hear bugaloo, you would hear live drumming. And that all is manifested in this amazing amalgamation of music that we have here. Wow. Yeah, it's a, a beautiful to hear the history and to kind of think about the connections back to the, the homelands of um, mm -hmm. the people who have come and, and also what was created here. Um, Juan, what do you see? I mean, Jersey City is an ever-changing environment. You know, um, this, where we are at the Nimbus Art Center is a testimony to that. We're very excited to you know, be able to keep keep the arts alive and present for people, but you know, it's 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 no secret that um, you know the the demographics are changing, mm -hmm. the financial makeup of Jersey City is 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 changing. That's part of what makes this art center possible. So you know, it's got it's got its benefits and its drawbacks. Um, what do you see for the future? Um, how how does this music continue to um, provide a vibrancy? continue to bring people together, continue to cross-pollinate with, with, with music from other groups. Um, what do you hope for, for the future, uh, you know, here at the Art Center and also, um, you know, in the, as you said, in the informal settings, in the church basements, mm -hmm. in the restaurants? I see, um, I, see a very, I see a very future. I mean, um, it's obvious that when, uh, when a group like Nimbus Dance Works actually begins a Latin American music series, it's a reflection not only of, you know, partnering with community group partners, which is always what was good for both on both sides of the equation, right? But also a recognition that there was a scene here before Nimbus was born, right? And that's the first level of recognition to recognize that people who just moved to Jersey City, uh, you know, check your egos at the door or at, or at the at the exit of the, of the turnpike and recognize that there was here quite a bit of activity, cultural activity that exists and is vibrant. The second point I wanna make is the music that we play that's reminiscent of these uh, rhythms, reminiscent of these melodies, 
from Central America, the Caribbean, and Latin America. You know, incredible richness, for example, of, of merengue and and music from Dominican Republic now with so many Dominicans add into the mix. Um, it's not stuff that you put on the shelf like a like a museum piece. It doesn't just exist in a in you know in sepia colored you know images that don't change. It adapts, it reflects, it grows. And where it grows, it grows based on what we're listening to. And what we listen to in places like Jersey City and Hudson County is the diversity of all musics. It's the richness of incredible cross pollination. Take Segunek Bamba, for example. Segunek Bamba is a traditional group that plays traditional drum music of Puerto Rico, bomba music and plena music. But if you listen to us perform live, or if you purchase any one of our two CDs, you would hear incredible fusion of other rhythms, both from Latin America, the Caribbean, from American soul music, from jazz. So you're hearing that in Kimbamba, and that's just one example. It's replicated all over the county and definitely replicated right here in Jersey City. Well, uh, it has been a real pleasure uh, talking with you and, and, and hearing so much about the legacy of this um, music and thinking about you know how it will continue to really thrive and, and change people's lives and uh, impact the life of our city. So uh, thank you so much for uh, being Appreciate part of that. this. And uh, mucho gusto, muchas gracias. And I uh, look forward to uh, uh, having you guys in, in, the, in the theater and, and performances and um, all the best. We look forward to it too. Thank you so much. Thank you.